putting the fangs back in feminism is a very urgent project. As it exists right now, I would say feminism is for white women and girls. You'll see white feminism in the movies, in the newspaper, in the capitalist system, in the wars that may affect your region. And it's in the conversations that you are invited to be a part of and the conversations that you are excluded from. My experience with white feminism uh, has been that I always have to like file my edges, explain my stories. I feel that if I talk about the fact that I was a single mother, the fact that I had a divorce, the fact that I lived in a shelter, a, a ton of things are automatically assumed about me. Structurally, we make it impossible for that black or brown or Asian woman to make any real changes within the feminist context. We have to make feminism political again. 58% of all women living in poverty uh, are women of color. The world that black and brown women inhabit is a completely different world from the world that white women inhabit. When I sat down to write this book, I wanted people to see that white supremacy within feminism, within the women's movement, is not just a problem within the United States, but is then exported all over the world. The war on terror was the first feminist war. And this has been talked about, but it hasn't been talked about in terms of what it did with the image of the white woman. I'm imagining Jessica Chastain uh, in Zero Dark Thirty. But Bin Laden is there, and you're gonna kill him for me. It's really being sort of pushed as this sort of protector of all humankind because she's gonna go get the terrorist, and she's so brave that she'll even participate in torture. You don't think she's a little young for the hard stuff? Washington says she's a killer. On a larger level, it is this weaponization of the white woman as simultaneously providing, taking feminism, you know, as a gift to Afghan women or to Iraqi women or Somali women or Pakistani women. Secure feminism is a term that was coined by Professor Laila Bulagod. The term essentially revolves around how these military war on terror interests of the United States and other Western powers came to coalesce with the larger transnational feminist project of freeing women from their oppressive cultures. I'm Laura Bush, and I'm delivering this week's radio address to kick off a worldwide effort to focus on the brutality against women and children by the Al-Qaeda terrorist network and the regime it supports in Afghanistan, the Taliban. In the United States, you actually had uh, feminist organizations like Feminist Majority who supported and hailed the Bush administration for going into Afghanistan. You have the morphing of this white feminist industrial complex into a military project where allegedly you're going out, you know, and you're going to make the world feminist. The secure feminist has become a figure that is dreaded by women in other countries. Another place where you see the impact of white feminism is within the conflation of sexual empowerment or sexual freedom as the sum total of empowerment and of freedom. If you can produce a carry in Nigeria or in India, then you're empowered because that's what the goals of an empowered woman are supposed to be. The word empowerment was introduced into the feminist lexicon by this collective that was out of India, represented by Geeta Sen. 
the whole premise behind using the term empowerment was to identify the women's struggle as an essentially political struggle that works against all institutions, all patriarchal institutions. It's almost like if I put you know, empowerment as like a concentrate in a glass. It's like more and more water poured upon it so that it increasingly has lost its flavor. The sort of compartmentalization of empowerment happened where you just kind of packaged it up as a buzzword. Its meaning has been diluted. The idea that it is a political struggle has completely been lost. Do not lean back, lean in. The girl boss feminism is, in my opinion, not a feminist at all. Um, she's out for herself. She's going to lean in. She'll do whatever it takes. It essentially says, look out for yourself. Where your ambition is concerned, you have the talent. Whether you have the killer instinct is the big question. It doesn't look at the ruin and the detritus that is left behind all these individual decisions of all these individual women trying to climb a ladder that men have constructed. It is an absolute death blow to feminism as a political project and as a collective project. The question becomes, what needs to happen for some of these changes to be initiated? One is that older white women, um, you know, who have kind of defined the story of the feminist movement by and large, will have to cede some space. It's just a recognition of the fact that everybody needs to be included in the conversation. You do not have to be white to be a white feminist. And the fact that you are white does not, and feminist, does not automatically make you a white feminist. It's important to distinguish essentially between whiteness and feminism. We have to put the politics back in this. When we are creating these conversations of parity, it's not just that I recognize you, it's that the state and other in institutions have to be structured such that they embody the redistributive agenda of feminism.